Guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be Fighting Spirit Mania up right in corner. We got Bonneth starting as the purple Protoss up left in corner. We got Dewalt starting as the pink Protoss. We're going with the full range of colors in this tournament. Got to have some aspect of variety. The map is once again Fighting Spirit. So if you're keeping score, this is going to be game four. Actually, I'm debating whether I'm... I'll just upload the entire set. I don't feel like game two was my best commentary. Because it was like, man, Bonneth immediately went into gas after his initial three zealots instead of waiting to see whether he was going to go into five or even potentially seven. But I think oftentimes that's planned on his part off the two gate opener. I would not be shocked to see him from the upper right hand corner go for the two gate, uh, his classic 910. Uh, the two gate once again. Actually, never mind. Looks like he's going to put the pylon alongside that Vespine Geyser. So maybe going to mix something up. That's usually if you're going to go for earlier gateways, earlier double gateway play, you'll see the uh, the pylon more towards the ramp. So this looks like it might even be a 12 Nexus or like gas first something. I don't know. You know what? There's no such thing as a gas first Protoss build as far as I know. I should also mention that for a long time <clears throat> when I was uh, in between and actually had time to practice StarCraft and I was trying to actually get halfway decent at StarCraft, I had this brilliant idea of like, oh man, if I can get some early gas, you can end up with an early Dragoon advantage somehow, so maybe there is some sort of gas first opener. And uh, I'm going to give a big shout out to Zerus Light, who's like, nope, that doesn't exist. But he managed to, he played a bunch of games and smashed me a bunch of times, which he would have smashed me even if I was playing heads up, because he's a much better player than I am. Uh, but experimented, experimented, found nothing, and was like, okay, never mind. Uh, but I guess that's just how I had to play. Gotta play the hard way, just like this set of commentaries. I'm gonna be a whole bunch of them. I think what I might, the other debate, I'm, deba I'm half flirting with this idea that I cast every single one of them, cast every single Fighting Spirit Mania game, but uh, of the grand finals at least, but um, only put up the good ones on Twitch. At least the first round I'll put up on Twitch and then maybe the good ones after that and just do that at night. I don't know, we'll see. To get the PVP in, <clears throat> Bonus got a bottom main corner first. Now he's gonna make his way towards the upper left. Walt went for, he's done a lot of these cross map scouts as far as openers. He's opened up Cyber Next Core. He is gonna go for that initial Zealot. Already has the initial two pylons down which suggests we're not seeing anything. Oftentimes when you're saving that third pylon, that can be kind of a big, uh, a big wily thing to do. The Zealot holding the ramp, <clears throat> blocking, getting two initial shots. The probe cannot sustain the third, so he's gonna go ahead and back off. And DeWalt's probe is going to be boxed out of the ramp as well, so, but he might be able to swing around. Never mind, the probe's gonna hold short. I was about to say, might be able to get some damage done on that forward probe. In the meantime, it is a Dragoon to follow up for both players. So basically the mirrored matchup although rather than range first ooh, the zealot not doing damage and bottom doing a great job of blocking it out though gonna hold here gonna see at the very least that it's rampless and that well okay dewalt didn't want to fight it for some reason i think if dewalt turned around and just attacked that was more base health on dewalt's probe am i right about that i'll have to go back and check that's not uh, well no i'm not gonna bother but <clears throat> I'm trying to think maybe never do the math live Especially if I sit here and think about the math, we're going to be missing this robotic facility that was built before range, actually. So it looks like it is potentially going to be Fast Observer, Fast Reaver, or maybe even just... Uh, sometimes I have seen players do this, and I'm not sure what precipitates it. So maybe we'll learn. That'll be a learning opportunity. That's what we'll call all of this learning opportunity. Um, is uh, Sometimes they'll go robotics facility gate. Without information, sometimes even, they'll go into Nexus to follow, then go to the Observatory and the Reaver. And to me, that oftentimes feels a little bit risky. Here, it looks like we are going to see Reaver first because that's... Well, never mind. So Shuttle, oftentimes when you see the Shuttle initially built, it's not going to... It, you see the Robotic Support Bay to start. Instead, we're seeing the Observatory first. Dwalt, in the meantime, has is moving his way up to 3-gate which is going to give him a sizable production advantage. Two Dragoons versus two Dragoons right the second on the low ramp. And he took the initial barrage shot from the two Dragoons. I think he just wants to try to go up and check whether, with the lack of scouting, whether or not there is a Nexus behind it. It is going to take about a minute and a half before you really start seeing those nuts because you have to have that full cycle of Dragoons out on the ground, plus negating the distance traveled on the ground. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure. I, what Another thing I would love to ask someone who's like a higher level Protoss player is what they consider. So 
there's two different types of reaver, right? There's the reaver on the ground where it's exposed, and then there's the reaver in the shuttle. And I'm curious what they feel like the reaver in the shuttle is worth as far as dragoons out on the field. And part of it depends on positioning, because if you end up with dragoons flanking that reaver or hitting from multiple angles, that negates a lot. But secondarily, inside a shuttle, you have a little bit more of distance control. But right now you can see DeWalt has that three gate advantage. So now it's going to be a bunch of dragoons going up. So he's going to have twice the number of dragoons potentially. As this is making its way up, looks like it's a two gate follow up. And he's going to careen down that zealot not long for life. Actually, never mind. He's just going to focus down. And now he's going to see an empty natural expansion, which lets him know that it was, in fact, a robotics opener. The zealot, is he going to be able to get in now that reaver's up there? It's also in the shuttle. But this is still four versus two with that reaver, and I think this is going to be sufficient numbers, particularly with this pocket, to go in. But that shuttle almost gone. Shuttle is now gone, but it's still two dragoons standing. The zealot actually gets the reaver kill out of all of that, but this is still going to be sufficient to go ahead and defend for Bonneth. So the next two rounds of Dragoons going to spawn. And that is now going to be three versus one. And you can just kind of distant wide walk the Zealot. And with the second Reaver potentially on the way and the high ground advantage. Otherwise, Bonneth is going to end up ahead overall in vision against the three gate. So mental note, that's how that plays out. Now the observatory getting dropped alongside a robotic support bay there. For DeWalt, DeWalt still trying to shove up and hope that the focus, so actually manages to get a focus fire on a weakened Dragoon. Takes some base damage otherwise, that probe, a hero, holding line. Third gate now dropped for Bonneth to try to equalize the, uh, the difference. He's also able to sneak in and scout. And so at least as things start, a bit of a detente. Bonneth, I think, is going to end up with the overall advantage because he's going to have the... Actually, it looks like you went for a follow-up shuttle. I was going to say you could get the two Reavers and go down to the low ground and grab the base where he wanted. Instead, going for the ultra-safe route is going to go ahead and back that Observer out. Look at these guys with their timing, by the way. So the Observer just now popping out, and this is Bonneth exiting with his own Observer, making sure he's not going to get swiped out. DeWalt looks like he's banking some minerals to go ahead and grab his base, where it looks like with the three-gate uh, Reaver play here from Bonneth. Bonneth, upon seeing everything, wants to go ahead and get aggressive himself. He's not going to wait for that second Reaver. He's just going to move out with the Dragoons he's got. So interestingly, and that I think it's going to be an even attack force as well. So we got six, six versus seven. So actually down a Dragoon and that, well, it's going to be a minute before this Reaver comes into play. And unfortunately for Bonneth, walking headlong into the attack force, now switching around. And that Reaver is going to be a big advantage. That was a great split up by DeWalt to walk it away from the additional Dragoons. He does need to stand and fight. He needs to buy himself some time. But that one lone Dragoon eating the two Reaver shots, which kept the focus fire, or I should say the splash fire, off the additional Dragoons. Worker sitting to the north to provide some informational advantage. Bonneth now working to the corner. The Dragoon's a bit spread for DeWalt. And that Reaver is still, yeah, able to, just its presence, able to bully a lot of this forward. Now the shuttle there in place, but ugh, it's dropping in the middle of this attack force, so taking a flurry of fire. The shuttle moving to the north to create some distractionary fire there, and it looks like the Reaver was just there earlier for Bonneth, so he's ending up... Well, I thought he was ending up with an advantage. It's hard to tell with these colors. Sorry, guys. We're going to switch it to this mid-game. That's right. Special Fighting Spirit Mania color swap to make things a little bit more... <laughs> I, like the... I like these colors, though. Oh, well. The nice pastels for once, but a little bit too hard to tell what was going what in the fight. But anyway, it looks like DeWalt was able to hold. I didn't think he was going to for a half second there, but it looks like that is also allowing him to get a little bit of an earlier nexus. Not missing a beat, was able to preserve that initial reaver, so he's going to scoop up an additional one and start charging forward. His observer was taken out in the midst of this, so it looks like DeWalt at least sees, it's com uh, sees it coming. He's got a good spread. On initial game at, but engagement, but this is still two Reavers versus one, so Bonneth is going to force DeWalt back. DeWalt trying to get that spread I was talking about and split the attack force to maybe jump on that shuttle, and now it's just Dragoons versus Reavers, but man, look at the splash there. So the shuttle's down, but I think these Reavers might be able to take things out regardless. A Dragoon actually might have come from the north there, and so now it is a slow Reaver walking toward the natural expansion with only a single Dragoon trying to defend. Bonneth, uh, Bonneth's base about to come online, so all he needs to do is sit down here in the natural, maybe even kill this probe, and make it a little bit difficult for DeWalt, and even if he ends up losing all of this, he'll still have that natural expansion built earlier, which puts him economically ahead. 
So just gonna plant right there. It looks like a shuttle sneaking out. I presume for scouting information. I'm kind of curious why it was out there at the 12 o'clock. I don't think I missed a reaver drop there. Did any of these guys have a kill? No. So additional dragoons making the way up, and now you've got that inverted. Not inverted. It's not an inverted ramp, but you got a, the inverted situation where the ramp's usually protective, but now it's a bit it's like that. Because of the splash damage of the Reaver and its potential damage there, makes it a little bit more challenging for DeWalt to walk down. Also, his observer was out of position. Fortunately, he's got that worker there to provide a little bit of latent information. So now able to walk down, but this base is coming well, well, well after Bonathan's natural expansion here. So, also we got a fourth gateway dropped. Part of the thing is, is going ahead and grabbing a natural expansion it doesn't mean much until you have the additional infrastructure behind it to really kick in that advantage. <clears throat> Attack force to the north for Bonnet, but that's leaving a stranded exposed natural potentially. It looks like there is a reaver right there. Nice scoop up last second. Never mind. It looks like one took, an, uh, took a hit, but DeWalt's going to call GG. He recognizes that's an expansion up. He's going to end up losing these three reavers very likely to that and the follow up. Bonneth had the Dragoons that were making their way back, and this was an extremely late natural expansion. Also, he has a ton of bases to work with, or I should say he's got a ton of bases. He's got a ton of games to work with, so it's this is just the first best of seven. Regardless, Bonneth is on the edge of winning his first series. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.